again. Welcome back to another automation video. This video I was actually not really gonna make, but I got a few questions about it, so I'm gonna make it now. It should be short, hopefully it's to the point. It's gonna be about scaling the automation vertically and horizontally using some of the concepts we talked about already with containerized on automation with the Docker containers and the app platform that I'm using and that kind of thing, whether you use DigitalOcean, Google Cloud, whatever it may be, right? It, it can be any of the app platforms, but we're gonna talk about how the scaling actually works. I'm gonna show it to you in DigitalOcean, and then I'm also gonna do a little code snippet review again to talk about like a few different ways that you would have to accept input from whatever way you're gonna accept input if you're going to scale in the way that I'm kind of scaling mine. It'll make more sense later, I promise. So the first thing is here is we've done this before, looking back at the screen, is you go to the app platform. I took everything off right now just to wear a blanket. I've been doing some beta testing with some new stuff, so everything's clean and whatnot anyway. So it's very quick. When you're creating here, there's two different ways to scale, right? You have scaling vertically and you have scaling horizontally. One of them, you're scaling the actual hardware or the technology you're using that you're running the software on, right? So it's one container on a massive VPS, right? The other way, is having multiple containers on one VPS. And you can have a mix of the two, right? So I could have one container with eight, con or uh, one VPS with eight containers. I could have three VPSs with eight containers. I could have one VPS, one container. It, it, it really is kind of either way, but there's two options on how to scale the automation. One is scaling the size of the VPS that you're using for more compute resources, more storage, whatever it may be to scale your automation that way. Let's say your worker, if you take a really small VPS and your worker is just using 100% right away and it needs more, you probably have to scale the VPS, right? But if your worker is only using 50% of the CPU, let's say, do you make the worker run faster on more threads and just scale up the VPS? Or do you deploy two workers on top on the same VPS, so one VPS, two containers? So I'm gonna show you an example of that in DigitalOcean here of what I'm talking about. So if I just grab, you know, like I said, one of the workers, just subdomain worker grade and take off auto deploy. Um, we don't even have to go through the whole creation screen. I think right here on the next page is going to be what I wanna talk about once it will let me through here. You're going to get to choose what plan you're on and you're going to get to choose how many containers you want on the said plan. So basically that gets us both, we get to choose horizontally how much we're scaling and vertically how much we're scaling, right? So we're gonna take away this one because we're gonna use my Docker file like I have in other videos. But here's, see how it says uh, pro plan. I can edit my plan here. You can choose pro or basic, whatever you want. That doesn't really matter. But let's say I wanna do pro. So here's, here's my one way to scale, right? Is by scaling my VPS. So this is scaling the actual size of the server I'm deploying on. So I could just have a huge, ideally, if you wanted to, have a huge worker with a, as many threads as you want and multi-threading and doing all these different things at the same time, great. But you may have to scale up your VPS, right? So there's the $12 a month, which is the base one. Again, we're in pro, but I think for basic, it starts at $5 a month, right? But for pro, let's just say $12 a month, 25, whatever, and you can scale that way up and down and I can make my VPS bigger and bigger and then scale up the automation to run faster, but not more workers. I'd still have one worker, but this container is actually the other way of scaling, would be keeping the VPS the same size and just scaling a bunch of containers, right? Those are my, my two different ways to scale is I can basically pick a size for my VPS and scale that up and down and then I can pick my number of workers that I want deployed and scale that up and down, right? And what will happen is this is basically saying that I'm choosing how big each VPS is and it will deploy me the VPS per worker containerized and then how many of those I want, right? So instead of us manually having to make a VPS, SSH into it, and then use Docker to deploy as many as we want, undeploy and orchestrate the Docker containers ourselves. This is just doing it for us. And technically speaking, it's not dropping. So if I want eight containers, 
it's not dropping eight containers on this one VPC. This is saying each container will have this much compute power and this is how much a month it will be per worker. And then here's your monthly your monthly cost of it ran all month, right? I mean, that's, that's kind of a lot. Like I said, I, I haven't even hit that number, but um, it's not saying that there's eight containers on one of those with one gig RAM and one CPU. That means every worker will get that, will get that thing, right? But if what I want to do instead is instead of having eight workers that are all in these little $12 a month, you know, plans with one gig and one CPU, and instead I just want to have one container that has eight gigs of RAM and two dedicated CPU, like that's your own choice. So those are the different ways to scale using DigitalOcean's platform. Now, again, there's way more options out there. One of the options that we may or may not get into in a later video is actually Kubernetes and DigitalOcean has a Kubernetes platform here. We may make a video on it, we may not, but again, if you're worried about scaling and orchestration and all that kind of stuff, you are now leaning into the Kubernetes sorry, territory of DevOps, right? But for now, for scaling on the app platform, these are your two options for scaling. Is how big do you want each worker to be so you can make one monolithic worker or I can make a lot of little teeny workers. And you can do cost analysis and what works better for you and how the worker does its thing or whatever it may be and scale it whichever, you know, saves you the most money that way, right? Now, if you're going to deploy more than one worker, if you deploy one worker, then the input doesn't really matter because the input's going into the same one worker all the time, right? And then that worker does all the work and puts all the resources in. But if I have eight workers working simultaneously, I have to make sure that all eight workers aren't working on the same thing. If I have, let's just say two workers and I have two domains I want to scan, bugcrowd.com and hackerone.com. I don't want them both to work on hackerone.com and then both work on bug crowd that totally erases the purpose of scaling your automation, right? I would want one to work on hacker one and one to work on bug crowd, right? Ideally. So there's a few different ways of how you could do that. The first way I'll show you in a code snippet here. Let me log back in to my box because we slept. So the first way here, and this is an old example from some code that I just pulled because I don't use this way anymore. But the first way to do it is this is my main function here in Golang. I sent some Discord messages in the beginning and the end just so I can like kind of log stuff. But this resolve domains is basically all that's running. And if you look, it starts by querying a table and just pulling all the objects out of a few different tables, right? So if I was running this worker alone and only this worker, it would work fine, right? Because it's gonna pull all the domains and it itself will work through all the domains, great. But if I have three of these deployed at one time, I don't need all three of them to pull all three of the domains, right? So that, going back to the Redis queue, which I think I still have deployed, hopefully, that DigitalOcean offers a Redis queue and that's what I use my Redis queue for is you can queue jobs in a pub sub model. And if you don't know what that is, I can make a video about it or look it up or we can chat about it, whatever you want. But I'm basically posting jobs to this Redis queue and then my workers can come peel them off and do them. And basically one worker will go grab one job and take it off the queue. So none of the other workers grab it. And each worker will get its own job. And if there's no jobs in the Redis queue, they'll just sit there and wait for one. And when one comes in, one of the workers will grab it. And if there's 10 jobs in the queue and I only have five workers, they'll go grab the first five in order, one, two, three, four, five, first in, first out. And the other five will wait in the queue. And when the first five get done, as the workers finish them, they'll go back and grab another one automatically, right? So that's one of the ways to give input to my automation where I can scale my automation up and down. And whether there's one worker or whether there's 15 workers, the input logic works the same because they're just going to the queue and trying to find a job. The database one I just showed you doesn't, doesn't work super great unless you have something sitting in front of your automation that will take the database, make a list of all the domains or whatever data you pulled, and then before anything starts, split the data up and send it to the workers to finish. And it would also have to keep track of that data as it comes back. And that's a lot of work. 
And I know Axiom and some other products that have been out there for bug bounty hunting do this, and that's really impressive. But for me, I don't wanna to have to keep track of what worker's doing what and what's in charge of what and how I split my data and how I'm supposed to be collecting all the results. I would much rather just send jobs out there and the job will sit and when the job gets done, I know one worker is handling one job and when the job's done, the data will be in the database and I'll be notified that the job was done and it was completed and then at any point in time, I can just go query my database down here and pull the data out that I want, right? There will be a job for Hacker One. One of the workers will go do recon on hackerone.com. Great. I'll get a Discord message saying recon was done, good to go, and I can come back and query all the data on my database that I would ever want of whatever my workers performed. And that way, if I have one worker, or if I have 15, it all works the same. So that's the model I use, and that's this subdomain worker main is the newer version of me taking an input. So you'll see there's no, um, there's no basically like uh, pulling data out of the database, right? Don't worry about this for loop again. As you can see in the comment, I have some weird issue with scaling CPU usage I have to fix. It's fine, we'll fix it. That's why I'm not making this code public because I have plenty of things. Again, I'm having a problem running a mass for some reason, it just instantly scales to way more CPU usage than either of these other two passive tools I'm using right now at this iteration of the subdomain worker. Anyway, this is what we're looking for, right? So this check domain is taking a string from uh, my Redis worker. And if I go down here to my Redis worker, I can show you what I'm talking about. So what the Redis worker does is it makes a Redis client connects just like it would to a database, right? You have an address, a password, a host name, all that kind of stuff, right? Great. It pings it to make sure the connection works. If not, it throws an error. If the ping works, then there's a for loop here that doesn't end, right? I'm not checking only five times. I'm checking until there's results. So it's just a never ending for loop. And all I'm doing is checking a queue on my Redis client. I'm trying to pop something out of the queue called subdomain worker. And there's a result for that. If I get an error or the error isn't none basically, then I print that I'm still polling for jobs and I wait another minute. And this can be a minute, 10 seconds, an hour, whatever you want it to be, right? But it's gonna sit there, it's gonna wait for a minute. And then the else, obviously the else branch won't happen. So it'll just go through the for loop and try and hit it again and say, hey, is there anything this time? So every minute it will ping and see if there's a job. And if there's a job, then what happens in the else will happen is I split stuff up with colons just to make it make sense. I think I got that from like hack scale from hack Luke. That's how he was queuing stuff. So it, it just made sense to me. Um, and I basically just used what he was using. So go check out ha hack scale for an example of this as well. Um, but basically all I'm doing is taking stuff out of my queue, splitting it up and grabbing the domain, which would be if I'm splitting by these colons that I'm using, it would be the, you know, the second index in the array. And I print, that way it's sitting logged in um, in DigitalOcean. So if I have to go back and look at the logs, it's there. But I'm saying this domain is being tested now. I push the result back to the client so that if I look at the client side of things, I can see that it grabbed that domain and it's being tested now. And I return the domain, right? So if you look at what's happening there, all it's doing is looping through until it finds, until it actually pulls something out of the, the queue in the Redis queue called subdomain worker. Once it's there, it's parsing whatever was put into the queue. And once it gets the domain, it's gonna hand it back to check domain. And that's basically my seed domain for subdomain enumeration, let's just say. And again, the subdomain worker is still obviously a work in progress, at least this passive one, the brute forcing one was so much better to make. But then I go in, I you know make a sync weight group and throw some jobs in there and actually do the subdomain enumeration, wait for the checks to finish, found domains, push them into the database and print how many new domains I found or if there were new, no new domains this run. And when this finishes, boop, it goes back in the for loop and starts over, right? Now, again, as you can see in the comment, I have it running five times and then resetting so that the worker will reset itself, set its CPU usage back down to zero, clean out its memory cache because for some reason it's like stacking itself up and then the CPU usage goes crazy. Ideally, this can just be a, a forever looping for loop and it just, it just goes constantly. But either way, you loop through, you till you get a job, you do the job and you go right back to polling. It works really well. 
that's what I've been doing with all my new workers now with the Redis queue. So that's really all I had in this video. If you have any questions, let me know. If you have any other things you want to know, let me know. Uh, hit me up on Twitter, the Discord channel, all that kind of stuff. I really appreciate you guys being involved and talking to me and asking questions. Other than that, peace.